would be a big help. Yes, I was muted. So there goes the first uh, three minutes of the stream. <laughs> okay, okay, he's now hosting me. Thank you, okay. Yeah, so I'll have to repeat myself. Uh, you didn't miss much of the first th three and a half minutes. But we had a French defense from Master 10. This is a Crazy House World Championship match. Elimination bracket, so the loser bows out. It is a, a, a knockout at this stage. So 10 games of 3 plus 2. The Master 10 playing black in the first game. It was a French defense with Knight e7, Knight g6. Uh, we had Bishop g5, f6, and then for some reason Shabrat, Shabrat left the Bishop hanging on g5. We had a rather strange sequence of moves. Yeah, it was my problem, <laughs> my fault entirely. Uh, Master 10 chose to sack the Knight here, and then we saw a check, a Knight f7, keeping the material. Bishop takes, Pawn takes Bishop, so Master 10 is a Bishop ahead. So two Bishops for a Rook. We saw Bishop at f5, Rook at g8. And bishop takes, queen takes. So we're up to the lie position here. A little bit of a delay. But at least the mic is working now. I hope. So it's going to be funny if someone sees the YouTube video later on. If they miss the match here. And uh, sees me mumbling to myself. I guess it's a bit like me commentating on a... No, it's like the opposite of me commentating on a past match. My mouth will be moving, but there'll be no sound. All right, knight at f4 from Master 10. Uh, it took him a long time to play knight at f4. What was the holdup? Was he worried about something? I'm not exactly sure what he was worried about. It doesn't seem like the queen second f7 goes anywhere. Queen takes g7. All right. Does this move really help? King Knight takes g2 check. I'm trying to understand what's going on because it seems like this, t this move is going to buy him a bit of time. At least it takes two moves for white to make a threat now. So he takes b4 and queen takes f8. So there's no knight for f6, which would be useful in attack. Again, I don't think sacking the queen goes anywhere. But master 10, yeah, I'm not sure about this knight takes g2 idea because the king is quite safe on d2. Because there's only diagonals in hand. Yeah, and, and was it too hard to defend the square f7? So perhaps knight at f4, that move where master 10 took a long time to play, was was not right. I'm not sure whether he missed the threat of queen takes g7. And then it was too hard to defend f7. Because once he brought the bishop back to e7, then the queen couldn't come in and defend f7. So I'm kind of trying to remember the position, but yeah, this knight takes g2 move just didn't get anywhere. I've uh, missed the opening. I assume it's... Uh, some early e5 and knight trade on d5. <clears throat> but how do they trade the bishops? Oh yeah, bishop g5. <laughs> bishop e7, take, take, and bishop at h4. So the target is now the pawn on d5. So you would assume something like bishop at e4 or bishop at f7. Katas asks, is this a candidate's match? Not exactly. The winner goes on to play Anjur Nakamura, who's... Got a four-foot win over Jeremy Durham. So that will be the candidate ma candidates match in the next round. And this is what you call round six. Not that the numbers really mean anything at the moment, but when you go to the, uh, the knockout website, you'll see what I mean. So we have bishop at f7, queen e2, d takes, d takes. Still this annoying pin here, but this is a nice response. Queen b4, check c3 ah the knight's hanging so well i mean there is e takes f7 check at the end f takes g7 e takes f6 check f takes g7 rook g8 three pawns in hand reminds me of the last game when master 10 only had two pawns in hand and couldn't do anything to defend so does shabrat want the knight or does he want the pawn on b2 i would probably just take the knight here and block on e6 if i was him Play rook g8. There's no knight in hand for f6 for master 10. So if you haven't been following closely, Shabrat had a couple of big wins in the last two matches in the elimination bracket. He beat John Stuckey and then Duches. And I, I would say he was the underdog in both of those two matches. 
And again, the underdog today has taken the first game with white. All right, so as predicted, but the pawns on a slightly more aggressive square on e4. So Master 10 really wants a knight for f6, but he's probably not going to get it if the knight just backs off to b8. Any better ideas than knight b8? Yeah, I wouldn't allow this check, knight at f6 check, if I was Shabrat. And as I, as I said when I was muted, uh, the spelling is Shah 6 Rath, but I'm going to say Shabrat. It's, I assume it's a B. I actually looked up Shabrat. If you Google it, it's a World of Warcraft player name or username. It's about the only thing I could find, so I, I will call him Shabrat unless he corrects me somehow. Knight at G6. All right, so getting rid of the bishop, which supports F6. What would you expect here? Bishop g5, and then gaining time on the queen, and then pawn takes knight. It may seem like a waste of time playing knight b8 on the previous move, but it's probably worthwhile. Hiding away the knight to safety and keeping it. Because otherwise black has to find a way to defend f6. It's not so easy now with the... Because there'll be two threats. Also, pawn at d7 check is a bit nasty after b takes c6. So he's gone for the counterattack with bishop g4. Bishop takes, knight takes, pawn takes b6. I seem to have a double. Ah, oh, yeah, just get rid of the second window. Because there was an echo. Knight f4, b takes c6. Alright, so there's still this f6 square. Possibly pawn at d7 as some sort of a threat. I mean, this knight takes e2 is really slow counterattack. Hey, Mun AC. Good to see you live. Kerry. Kerry who? Uh, hmm. Ah, Kerry from Newcastle. I actually know two Kerrys from Newcastle. <laughs> uh, hmm, queen at f8 check. Something's going to block. Pawn at e7, he just needs a rook for d8 to mate. And with this knight on d2, e2, there's no possible counterattack. Even d2 is covered, even if there was a pawn, but there's no pawn, so I would assume just queen takes rook. Uh, b takes c6 seems forced. Probably then bishop it takes e2, threatening bishop a6 check, cutting off the escape on b7. Uh, actually, then bishop takes. Oh no, the knight was covering d7, so. Probably lots of ways to win. That's it. Rook, take, rook at d8, checkmate. Oh, yeah. So I know two carries from Newcastle. <laughs> uh, the guy I had dinner with, I assume. So one game all in a 10-game match of 3 plus 2. Same opening again in game 1 when I was muted. Uh, we had knight bc6 and then knight g6. All right. Let's see if Shabrat repeats the moves with knight g6, bishop g5. The other choice, of course, is knight f5. Okay, saying was king, king b8 a try. Mm, possibly. But at that stage, I think it was... White was just you know, collecting all the pieces. Probably a number of ways to win. I would have just taken on e2 and gone bishop a6. Okay, so bishop g5, f6. This time, I oh yeah, something different with knight f5. f6, take, 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 take. The white sacrificed the bishop and is intending to put a knight on f6, but it's only a check. So I wouldn't mind so much if, if I see knight at f6 check. If, if I was master 10, just tuck the king on d8. No more checks. And then there is still the threat of queen takes g2 to deal with. I would even think about if I was playing black and it was my move, inserting a move like pawn at e3. Oh no, he's taken the pawn on d5. Hmm. 
So now, yeah, I'm not sure about queen takes g2, rook g1, if that ends up favoring white, because you'd expect a queen sack, knight takes g1. It's not really a lot to do with the rook, and there's a threat of queen the f6 check to deal with. Oh, he's gone for it. But what's what's the idea here? Mm, I mean, there are a number of threats, because I'd be a bit worried about pawn at d6 as well. Can possibly slow down white's attack with bishop at a5 check. But queen at f6 seems like the main threat. Alright, so he hasn't sacked the queen, but then I was worried about pawn at g7. So white is winning some material back with a huge initiative, and... Yeah, getting rid of one of these very important defenders on f8. I don't know what the holdup is playing pawn at g7. What's the problem? What's he thinking about? Maybe pawn at f6? Uh, build, a, build a massive base on the dark squares. So if there was some non-threatening move, what is black what is black gonna do? What is where is black's counterattack coming from? So I I was hesitating before queen takes g2 because I think it would have been really useful to poke a hole in f2, but this knight does a good job in covering the square e3. And if you attack the knight, then... Hmm. Uh, the queen was on g7, so that could have been pawn at f6, buying a bit of time. Anyway, that's another story. So we do indeed have pawn at g7, take, take. And all kind of threats on e7 and c7. Hmm. I mean, ordi ordinarily, bishop at e4 would be a good response because it's uh, swiping at both the knights at once. Hmm. Well, this seems like a purely defensive move, and... Uh, maybe Master Tan is relying on rook takes c7 bishop at a5 check as a defense. And the rook is useful if black picks up a rook for f1. So I was half expecting white to just back off and go rook g1. Seems like the safe... Oh, but then black is counterattacking with bishop at e4. Well, it's not, not so obvious that white has a... An overwhelming advantage, although it does look like it at first. And also, you notice this move defends the knight on f3, so bishop, it takes the sting out of bishop at e4. So then you can respond knight takes c7 because there's no second bishop in hand for a5 check. Vin x008, I'm not very good. Can I challenge you to a game after this? We'll see, we'll see. But it's gonna. I'm gonna be here for a while. It's a ten-game match. This is only game number three. So the knight has gone to f4, leaving the rook hanging there. The rook has been hanging for a few moves while white's been on the hunt for a queen. So what's going on here? Is there some? Is there some trick with knight takes e5, bishop at e7 check? I don't see how that works out. What's the idea of a oh, bishop? Bishop at f6 check. So then there'll be bishop at f6, check bishop, let's say bishop at e7. But even with the check on b4, the the piece is still guarded, whatever you take with on e5. So, Alright, that was the idea. Bishop takes rook instead, pawn takes knight, check, rook at d6. Uh, so, it seems in the last few moves, Master Ten has organized some defense. Uh, getting rid of this rook, the knight has backed off out of the way. There's a little bit less pressure on the dark squares around black's king. And this rook at d6 gains time on the queen. The question is, is there a force sequence with the checks with c7? Obviously now there's no time for bishop at a5 check. So can you go to d7, allow the rook drop and then go back to d8? That's my first thought. So if bishop at e7, you're relying totally on a counterattack. But even queen at c1 can be blocked by a piece on d1. I don't see the follow-up. Hmm. 
So what's wrong with bishop at e7 and then rook takes e7? So down to 7 seconds plus 2 seconds per move for Shabrat. Bishop at a5 covers c7, which is useful. But there are potential threats of rook d7. Or bishop takes, there may be no threat. So knight at e3 covers d5. I suppose white's threat is mainly just rook takes bishop, rook takes. And you can't put a bishop here because there's queen at e8, mate. So what to do to save the bishop? Yeah, so what I was saying before, rook d7 is answered with bishop takes, and then you can hide away on c8. So what about something like bishop at h6? Does that work as a defense? What am I missing? Uh, just e takes d6 perhaps is too strong. And then if there's a bishop takes c3, yeah, there are enough defenders on c3. Master 10 in trouble. Uh, so taking a pawn, what's what's going on there? Queen at f8 check, does that work? Wow, this is going too fast. So the, the rook on the 7th and the queen do help defend. Two queens in hand. The only threat seems to be on e8. It does look defensible for the moment, at least. Rook e7. Uh, and then queen at f8, I assume rook at e8 was the idea. So the king for the moment is safe on b8. Good defense from master 10. I'm sure Shabrat had a better way to do this. Uh, so just... Oh, he's going for the attack. I was going to say... Oh, this is getting chaotic. Uh, keep attacking. Yeah, there's no immediate threat. Bishop covers c7. Surely Master 10's got this one now. Yeah, it's a good idea. You can also take on f5. This is even better. Just take on f5 and keep... Dropping pieces. You can even promote if you want. Black is totally safe. Yeah, just promote to a queen the main threat or a rookie one check. So white has to throw everything into the attack, but... Oh, hang on. Rook at c8, knight d7. King d7 is forced. Uh-oh. <laughs> I've called this too early, but is the king saying, oh, there's bishop at e6, what's he doing? Bishop at e6 check, surely. But then king takes, and the knight on e5 covers everything. So even with the queen in hand, it was still enough defense with king takes rook. Well, exciting finish. You'd think Master Tam would have run away with it, but... Wow, so, so it was a nice run to b8 with the king, and then the bishop on a5 covered everything. But yeah, very exciting game. Hard to predict. Master 10 has taken the first black win, so two games to one. A very similar opening again, but this time there's a variation with knight at a5. Of course, if you have, if you ever do this, you have to make sure there's no bishop b4 check, because in the previous game, the pawn d4 had already been played. Uh, but that's not such a factor here. So Castellane just defends the check on g2 can sack, but it is losing a lot of material after knight takes and bishop takes c6. And then probably bishop takes d5 to follow, and then that will help cover some squares near the white king. Uh, but not now with the knight covering d5, so I assume white is going to trade for the bishop. Mm, although... This queen could be a bit annoying coming down to g4 or h3 in the long term. There's also a hole on e2 to cover. So I'd be a bit worried about knight at e2 check and bishop, or even queen h3. Does that work? A bishop at d7. No, that doesn't work. So what happens on queen h3? Just some move to defend g g2 like knight at e3. So perhaps this, this bishop move is better. Qatar saying, I think I saw this in some Crazy House World Championship. Do you mean this opening? Because it's a bit unfamiliar, this early e5, knight d5. I don't remember it in Bug House on Fix, but that was about 20 years ago. It was quite common. Yeah, I'm not sure about queen h3, because if g2 is defended by a knight on e3, then what do you do? 
I'll take it with the knight first, but then the other knight's hanging on e2. Oh, but then this knight takes e3. I don't know if you saw my match against Master Ten, but it's kind of familiar. The ideas of putting the knight on g2 and then taking another knight and opening up a big hole on g2. So, black only has a pawn and a knight. It's not enough at the moment. Uh, pawn on g2, king g1. You need to somehow get rid of this queen. And no, you can't play queen b5 because it's check. Uh, queen g4. I can't see that going anywhere at the moment. Just put the bishop in the way. Although maybe that's not such a crazy idea. So if black had castled, it's it's interesting with the idea of queen g4. Even if bishop at f3, then you can possibly sack the queen and put a bishop on e4. Mm, because obviously the rook sack is, is dangerous with the pawn sitting on g2. And then knight at f3 in the end is the idea. Queen takes a, a, anyway. There might even be some sack on f7 if you haven't castled. So pawn at c6. I think master ten is defending this at the moment. Always got to make sure this f3 square, the black doesn't pile up on it too many times. So what's the idea? He doesn't want to take here. Bishop at b5. Oh, he's just gone into it straight away. But hang on, this is going to be a check if he sacks the queen. Or is his idea to play pawn at g2, knight at f3, and then take the bishop? With a threat of queen f1 checkmate to follow. But is there just queen takes bishop on h3 at the end? Oh, what? Has he missed that this is check? So it seems like all Master Ten has to do here is to defend the square f3, but the bishop on d7 does help defend in the long term, so it does allow black to build up with something like pawn at e4, threatening knight at f3. So Master Ten has chosen to play a much better move. Queen takes d5, attacking the rook and also defending the f3 square. He'll be looking into queen sacks, but the square g5 is covered, so I can't see it working at the moment. Uh, just got to make sure you have you keep defending the f3 square. Hmm. Shabrat going for the Saxit style. Yeah, I mean, it's quite dangerous because he needs to win with black. He can't just go the rest of the match with all white wins, so he has to hit back. Um, so what's the material count? White is a queen ahead for... Just a pawn at the moment. But Master 10 has to keep worrying about this square f3. Hmm. I'm sure Master 10 is looking for some way to give back the queen. But I was even looking at king takes. Uh, again, a saying is rook takes e5 anything. Uh, so what's the idea? After pawn takes queen, you want to sack the rook as well. And then, where's your knight check? Hmm. I see you've got a bishop check and a, a queen drop, but doesn't the bishop here cover f5? And with the pawn sitting on d5, then you don't have a knight drop there either. I don't know, I didn't see it. Maybe there was some drop on f6 to follow after. Or bishop g5, queen at e5, bishop takes f6. Was that the idea? Or maybe there was no idea, Just you just saw a few checks. Alright, so what is this knight takes g7 business? You hope that knight at f6 check or rook takes e 7 works. Mm, I have to say, I, I didn't see it. Maybe I'm missing something. So, rook takes e7 seemed good enough. And many checks. Yeah, I saw many checks, but didn't see a mate. So what do we have here? There's still a threat of pawn at g2. Alright, master 10 seems to want to defend from a long distance. Queen takes f7. 
Still covering the square f3. Queen a3, what? Are you serious? Uh, bishop g2, okay. Uh, hang on. Oh yeah, I see. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, the knight is pinned. There's no knight at e6. There's a knight at f7. I wonder if that goes anywhere. It should. This should be mate with two knights because the queen will end up on b7. You got knight at c4, b3 to finish. Oh, I thought he'd just go knight at a5, queen at b7, knight at c4, b3. Hang on, what's Master 10 doing? Was it necessary to block off this bishop? Uh, can anyone explain? I don't understand. Oh, he sees the pawn at b4, pawn at b3. Alright, but knight at c4 seemed a bit faster. He probably just missed a knight at c4 check. Because he had two knights in hand. Alright, so Master 10, three games to one. We see a... Yeah, knight at d6, what? <laughs> I was thinking the same. Uh, we see the same opening again from last week. We call it the the Master Wolf opening. This early bishop d7. And just taking back with the bishop to keep black very safe. So white will end up with a material advantage, but then the pawns are really useful to push the knight back, maybe back to e1. And I had to solve these practical problems last week against Master 10. So I think he played the same opening about four times against me. So yeah, I like this response, knight e4. Because then if the queen comes out, it's easy to harass with bishop at g5. Uh, so just leaving the knight on f3 hanging. Mm, probably just take this bishop without thinking too much. And I suppose Master 10 is trying to hide on g6 and possibly h5. Alright, what's this? What's this bishop takes? Yeah, I thought Master 10 would sack the queen. That wasn't too hard to predict. He's taken on g2. And so Shabrat has to do all the thinking here. How do, does he want to try and pull the bishop back? Does he want to cover f4 again a couple of times to stop the knight checks happening on f4? I mean, with the bishop covering, there can't possibly be any mate threats. Even bishop takes g7 is possible. So what then? Pawn takes, rook, queen takes, knight at f3, king h1. Uh, as black, you really want the square e2 for a pawn, but then the bishop covers e2, because that enables this queen deflection, and rook at g1 is mate. Could also be a rook at e1 in that case. And then the idea is pawn at g2 would check if queen takes and keep the checks. So what happened when I was rambling on? Our oh, bishop takes f5. Oh, the threat is queen takes d7 check. So king takes, keeping the queen on the d-file. Rook at g1 check, knight at g1. g takes f6 and white to play. So no knights, he's used the knight for a blocker, so there's no knight at c5 check if he sacks the queen. Obviously not worth it at the moment. Unless he wants to be fancy and play queen at d5 check and pick up the rook, but then... Oh uh, yeah, I think queen at d1 is too annoying. Well, I guess there's rook at e1. But you're pulling a lot of pieces away from the attack. So queen at g2, so both queens are now on the board. The only major threat seems to be just queen takes rook. So is master 10 going to play something like knight at h4 and then... and then pawn at g2 next? So yeah, knight, knight at h4 seems like the obvious move. What am I missing? 
Has Black moved his king? It, it may be possible to castle queenside at some point. If not, let me check. It doesn't seem like Black has moved the king. I don't quite understand. Don't quite understand why he took on g1 first. Knight at h4. So probably you would just leave the queen on g2 and counterattack. Because playing knight at h4 first, well, it could have been similar. I mean, queen takes rook, pawn at g2, take knight takes, and then pawn at g7. Right, this is a very risky defense. King e7. Does it work? So what if I say white to play and win? Can anyone find an answer? White to play and win. It does look like one of those positions. Rook takes f7, queen takes d7, bishop takes e6. Was that just made in three? Seems like made in three. What am I missing, guys? Tell me. So pawn at g5 blocked out the queen because you need the queen to defend g7. Ah, oh, there's a bit of a delay, so the chat is going to answer me later. Uh, g takes, king takes f6. Two pawns. I wonder if it's enough. Ah, rook takes f7 instead of pawn at g5. Uh, so queen g4, a non-checking move finally. So what is master tan going to do? Put something on g7? Uh, it's a nice move, queen g4, because the big threat is to play bishop f6 check and rook at h8. Master Tan's missed it. What? Ah, oh, this works too, but yeah, bishop... Oh, hang on. <laughs> Surely bishop f6 would have been better. Time out. Black wins. Wasn't bishop f6 check just made in two? Wasn't bishop f6 check just made in two? I mean, I'm usually really bad at finding forced mates, but... Man, that's unbelievable. Looks like there were two mates missed. So Master 10, very lucky to get away with that one. Four games to one. Same opening again, but this time no castles. Rook g1. Even at the end, queen takes g2 seem crushing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not. I'm not even particularly trying to find force mates. I just. That's just the first move that I see. I just. Uh, okay, saying rook h8 was made in four, but how does it work after king g7? What am I missing? I I can't think what he had in hand. There was some bishop move. It was either bishop h6 check or bishop e7 check. I don't get the idea though. How do you use the rook on h8 if king g7? Did he have something else in hand? I don't know. Okay, can tell me. I just I can't see mate after rook h8 at the moment. Uh, so yeah, Master Tens learned from that castling game where he he took a pawn on c6, but there was a huge counter-attack. Uh, looks like he's doing much better this game. So he's taken a rook on a8, put it back on b8 straight away. He's a massive pin on the 8th rank. It looks... Uh, same idea again. I, always, I could say he's borrowing Shabrat's idea uh, with a knight on e2. Oh, he had a pawn for h6. Okay, I just forgot about the pawn. So pawn at h6, then pawn at h5. 
and then something to mate uh, this is just game over ah oh, well not quite yet <laughs> knight c7 check mm. all right this takes some calculation to find a force mate i mean it looks so close but rook takes doesn't work knight takes i can't see working oh bishop c6 ah yes but I still don't see mate, even after knight c7, or rook, C8, uh, rook d8. Hmm. I mean, there's always knight takes g1 to bail out if you need to. Uh, probably take on c7 first. You just got to avoid the, the only possible mate threat is knight uh, queen at e2. So just go knight takes g1, I would assume. Yeah, no need not to pick up a knight. Easily defensible if queen at h1. So I, I guess rook takes c7, and then the white king is still completely safe. And then you can choose how to counterattack or whether to pick off another pawn on d5. You could possibly pick up the queen. Oh, what about pawn at d6? Does that work? No pawn at d6. Ah. I think it would have won a queen pawn at d6. Or perhaps rook takes c6 to follow. Anyway, we see some desperate attempt to counterattack, but surely white has this game in hand. Uh, knight, a uh, rook at d3, yeah. But I, I suppose black can just attack this. What about knight at f4? Any bishop check can be answered by knight takes d3 check. So certainly not over yet. It's a little bit hard to tell who's winning at the moment. So rook takes d3 looked good at first, but knight f4, very strong response. Because mm. you can also pick up the bishop if the rook moves anywhere sideways. So I'm really not sure what to do. Bishop e4, perhaps. Yeah, rook takes and knight takes d5, but then there is knight at c6 at the end. So Master Tan is hoping to pick up a queen this way. Knight at c6 check. Yeah, I thought bishop at e4. Bishop to e4 check. What was the safest way? Bring the bishop back to d3 and then the rook. It's unclear what the rook is doing on c2. Alright, but now Master Tan has to worry about knight d3 check and all kinds of potential mate threats. Yeah, even rook at f1 check almost works. Hmm, not quite. There's rook at e1 at the end defending everything. So yeah, knight d3 check. He's going for it. Uh, there is a queen at f1 if king e2. Uh, so queen at e1, the obvious move, but is it enough? King takes knight. You got a bishop check out here, you got a bishop check out there. There's even e4 check if king takes knight looks death. Looks like death. So king c2, only other move. Mm, what to do with the rook? Yeah, not so obvious what to do with the rook here. Hmm. So queen takes f2 check, easily blocked. So noticing that one rook is useless, you might as well... Ah, oh, actually this is a really nice idea. Knight e1 check no matter what you block with, because there's a pawn at c2 to mate. The king has to go up this way. So perhaps blocking on e2, maybe that would have made a difference. 
although it's still there were enough pawns to mate if he went backwards either way so rook at b4 check is that game over and just find the right discovered check uh, rook takes b2 and queen a3 rook takes b2 check so you have to block on b4 And then, and then, and then, hmm. Oh no, no, not time out. Hang on. <laughs> this can't happen twice in a row. Ah, oh, what a tragedy for Shabrat. He's too worried about the counterattack with knight at c6, but was the king just safe on e8? So he, he could do some preparatory move and even rook takes b4 or something. I don't know. Maybe rook anywhere was good except rook takes b2. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Well, uh, two losses on time in the very likely to be winning positions. Uh, and. Yeah, so we see. Let's forget about those two for a moment. Uh, the scoreline could have easily been. Uh, four games to three in favor of Shebrat. But 5-2, this is... This is do or die for Shebrat. Uh, five games to two, one game more for Master 10 will take the match. And what's Gena saying? He has bets on 6-2 and 6-3. So what are you saying? You can have two bets. Does it really help you if Shabrat wins one more then? Uh, okay, so we have a slightly different position. This time, Master Town not allowing Knight takes f6 check. And I see the Knight's gone back to e1, so... He's keeping all the knights on the board at the moment. Um, idea is to play queen h4 next. But knight g3 is a possible defense. Don't know whether there's any need to allow this. Gonna saying I placed two bets. But which one uh, yields higher profit? 6-2 or 6-3? Oh, hang on, what's happened? f4, okay. No en passant. Because I guess knight takes f3 was a good response. So bishop d4, check, pawn at e3, queen h4. And Shabrat deciding whether to take the bishop or bring the knight back to g3. Take the bishop, okay. Queen takes knight. Uh, I suppose knight b5 can now be answered by castle's queen side, is that the idea? Otherwise... Hmm, with g3 not possible at the moment, I suppose the attack is mainly on the light squares. Maybe Master Tan's just waiting for a pawn to pick up to stick on f3. I'm not sure where the attack is coming from. Probably knight, knight d4 here. Uh, knight b4. So he wants to trade a bishop and stick it on, I suppose, on f3. Not a lot of white pieces defending f3. Take, take, take. Hmm. I think this pawn trade is more useful for Master Tan at the moment because he's the one with the pawn and the opponent's half of the board. And this pawn on f3. In some cases, this might even allow him to push forwards with g3. Although in that case, a bishop for h2 is really useful. So what about something like knight takes d3, queen takes, and then pawn at f3, something takes, and then pushing ahead to g3? Or is that sacking too much? Uh, this one, I um, don't quite understand. It's easy to block that with a pawn.
So let's see what Master Ten's attacking idea is, or whether he just wants to keep keep improving his position. Maybe Rook D8, or would you castle right now with this bishop staring at your king? All right, that was unexpected. B5. What's the idea? How does that improve his position? Leaves a slight big weakness on B7. Um, it's not so important if he wants to castle kingside. He can tuck the other rook over to E8 and everything's quite safe. So he wants a bishop for... I'm not quite sure. Bishop at C5 check. Knight at C5 perhaps? I'm guessing knight at C5. Yeah, many options. Knight at c5 seems to defend and leaves an outpost on c5. So why was that not an outpost? Oh, you mean for white. That's why he's covered it. <laughs> not to allow knight at c5. Uh, bishop at d4 check. Is there some reason he wants a knight? Black is down a lot of material, says Katas, but he's got this pawn on g4. I, f I feel like this pawn's going to help him at some point. Knight at e4, and then he really wants to push g3, so he's got to do something to break this pin on the queen. Yeah, I don't think black is down too much material. This is a good response. Thread his bishop at f7 check. So still... A little bit hard to tell who's winning. But also, knight takes d7 could be quite annoying. So he's given the bishop. He's gone all in for the attack. Knight takes bishop. What's he going to do with this one? Knight takes c3 and then something at e2. Or is the idea to push g3 and just kick the queen out of the way? Push g3. Ah, oh, this looks painful. I don't mind knight e7 giving up the rook, so just queen h6. Queen h4, yeah. So I think there's not enough time to play knight f7. Ah, so this is much better idea, going for knight at g6. So no time to push g3 because of knight g6 check. And he can pick up the queen if there's a threat with bishop of g6 and rook at h5, check. Because this is coming with check. It's all coming with check. So if you play g3, that's really not going to help. Also, the queen defends h5. Yeah, so everything is happening with check. And this doesn't seem like enough of a threat. So just go bishop at g6, rook at h5. Oh, hang on, this bishop takes h2. Oh, yeah, no, you can't play rook at h5. No, bishop at h2 is too strong. There's knight at g3 check or pawn at g3. What? What? That was a slip, surely. Surely just bishop at g3 and then... And then rook at h2 and pawn at f2. Take. Take. Wasn't that enough to win? I don't understand any of these moves. <laughs> now Master Ten's winning. And why didn't he go knight at knight g6 check before? Can anyone understand these moves? That's that's made him one. All right, I'll, I need to go back to this. The game is officially over. The match is officially over. Master Ten goes through to play Andrew Nakamura. So congratulations, Master Ten. Uh, and bad luck, Shabrat. I thought he was winning the last three games in a row, clearly. Yeah, why not knight g6, exactly? So this is a key position. It seems like Master Tan slipped with knight at g3, because it seems to me that just pushing g3 or bishop at g3, any of these moves would lead to mate. And I cannot explain this pawn at h7, check. Just go knight g6 check. If king up, knight takes rook, it all comes with check. And if king there, just drop the queen. Queen takes rook, it's made in two. 
So that's a real shame for Shabrat because he was winning the last three games in a row. And the scoreline could have been... Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the total score. That's why I wasn't understanding your bet, Skinner. I thought the scoreline was 6-2. It was actually 6-1. But the scoreline could have been four games to three in favor of Shabrat. Yeah, he missed three game, three mates in a row in the last three games. So, wow. What a shock. I mean, the result to me is not shocking, but... But yeah, all the all the slips and the non-checking moves at the end were, were very surprising. And yeah, this rook at h5 check, you can really only afford to do it without this. Because I was looking at the position before bishop at g3. It's possible with pawn g3 because the queen is covering h5. That was That's what I was pointing out before. But it's very different after bishop at g3 is played because... Then this bishop set comes with check and there's no escape anymore. So you need to think of something else uh, rather than you know this checking sequence. So pawn, bishop, rook, what should white do? What should white do from here? A bishop check I guess is okay. King h8. Yeah, you need a good defensive move, it seems. You'd like to pick up a knight for f7, or some clever way to interfere with the queen, but you first have to deal with the mate threat. There's not many obvious moves that I see to deal with the mate threat. What about just pawn at h3? Is it too much to allow bishop takes h2 check? King takes, but there's no rook yet, so you can just back off to h1. Although after something lands on g3 with check, there's a knight at f2 to check, take, take, take. Rook at h2, king g1, bishop takes f2. So yeah, it's a big threat to take on h2, even after pawn at h3. Can't see an obvious defense for white. Hmm, yeah, and any time the king steps to h1, this knight at f2 check is very powerful because if there's a vacant square on h2, you drop the rook, force the king back to g1, and then take on f2 with check. Hello, Nicola Blows from Perth. So I cannot see an obvious defense here for white at all. Uh, yeah, pawn takes g3, surely going to be mated after bishop. Bishop at check. Ah, oh, it's just made in two. Uh, knight takes g3. So, I don't know what to do. Rook at h1. Too passive. <laughs> just go pawn at f3 and clean up. Pawn at f2 and clean up. Yeah, so what about before this? Perhaps you could delay this capture with knight takes rook. And even leave this check because you'd like it to all come with check. So perhaps here is the time to defend with pawn h3. So the move order seems critical. Then if bishop takes, king takes something at g3, king h1. Then at least black can't play knight f2 because the rook takes and then you don't have a rook to drop on h2. If you take this first, then you have this checking sequence starting with knight takes f8. Hmm, yeah, and then it's black's turn to defend squares like uh, h7 and g6. So that's a big mess. I think I've had enough for today. Too much thinking. I'm not meant to do so much thinking as a commentator. So just meant to call the action and follow the moves. And uh, yeah, but that was certainly an exciting finish, the last game and the previous two with all the missed mates. So OK, OK has made a study, you can see in the chat, of all the missed mates. I'm sure he's going to include that in the uh, CWC recap. I think he's, he's uh, collected over 64 games to put in one study. There's now a second study. Uh, full of 
Uh, there were seven games, I think, in the second study, but this can certainly be uh, an extension to that. So, final scoreline again is six games to one. Um, a very complicated last game. <laughs> Katar says Mugwort felt the players miss so much, he had to play both sides instead. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm just... I'm just saying the first move that comes to my head. I'm not. I'm not thinking too much. I'm trying not to. So it's very possible that I miss lots of stuff too, especially when I think, "Oh, there's a force mate," and then I'm usually just hallucinating and pretending pieces exist that don't exist. Legion just. Ah, uh, Legion Destroyer collected all the games. So yeah, certainly a few good ones to collect from this sequence. So Master Ten goes on. He will play Andrew Nakamura next at a time to be decided. So let's just quickly have a look at the bracket. Okay. So we can see the section right here. Uh, this is called round six, but that doesn't really mean anything at the moment. It doesn't even guarantee that the players have, have had six rounds because they're all enter entering the elimination bracket at different points. Uh, Master 10 goes on to play the final match to qualify for the 12 player candidates knock, uh, not knockout round robin. 12 player candidates round robin. So that is round seven, uh, and that will be one of the four pairings, so the bottom one here. Next one up will be played in approximately 11 hours from now. It'll be an exciting, a close one. Legion Destroyer versus Art of Deception. Uh, so Legion had a good win, 6-3 over Atomek. And Art of Deception, a surprise win, 6-4 over Little Plotkin. And knocked out Little Plotkin in round 6. So moving up from here... It uh, seems like Zek is withdrawing, which would leave Lone Wolf only one match from qualifying, but would have to, to defeat the winner of Penguin and T-Cubes, which is happening in, I don't know, 24 hours from now, something like this. So I'm going to pick T-Cubes to win this one and Cubes to go on to qualify. So that's my pick out of those three. Uh, Penguin doesn't play a lot of Crazy House, it really de depends on his form on the day and if he can hustle cubes, although you, you find that a lot of these bullet and hyper bullet players often play quite slowly in 3 plus 2 and they end up in a time scramble even though they're super fast with the mouse it's surprising but you do often notice this um, Bugzilla will play the winner of Clearcast versus the winner of uh, this very delayed match because Caragialis is on holiday versus Recrec, which is happening, I think it's next Saturday, so in about six days from now. So, I don't know, just go on ratings. Let's say Caragialis to take that one. Clearcast, I think, is the heavy favorite against either. Okay, saying so Cubes doesn't play much these days as well he says definitely penguin the favorite um it was a close match wasn't it against variance only six four to variance only but yeah variance only certainly uh, one of the biggest improved players i think along with legion destroyer in the last year or two uh but yeah anyway i'll stick to my prediction i go for cubes even though i might be completely wrong uh, and then, yeah, one of the biggest matches, only one of these two guys will qualify, Bugzilla and Clearcast. So, a bit unfortunate for one of these two players. They certainly both both deserve to make the candidates, but on the seedings, Clearcast is 18, and there are only 12 players to qualify because it takes into account, you know, your maximum rating, which... If you consider the deflation over the last two to three years, then certainly a lot easier to achieve a 27 or 2800 plus rating a few years ago. But only one of these two players, Bugzilla and Clearcast, will qualify. Uh, along with uh, John Lee, I'll predict my Aussie teammate, my 
good old friend Bugzilla to qualify, but you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if there was an upset here. But yeah, let's see. Let's say let's say six six three in favor of Bugzilla over Clearcast. But yeah, it's gonna be exciting games. They both have a more positional style than than a lot of players. You could see some sixty or eighty or a hundred move games there. If it if it's D four D five, Jusugi told me he had six three versus Penguin, which is quite good for Penguin. Uh, does he mean in the? It certainly wasn't in this series, right? Because Penguin would have a high maximum rating. Yeah, Penguin being the number three seed. But how long ago, Katask? He'll answer in twenty seconds from now. Uh, yeah, so Jusugi had a lot of clean sweeps, isn't he? Doesn't he? Uh, six one over Simba, six two over Lone Wolf, six zero over Atomic, and we'll play GSVC for twenty five dollars, just a bonus. And next weekend, yeah, he's saying one of the older CWC matches. But yeah, I think I was lucky to play Penguin two years ago, just after he, he came back from the American Youth Championships. So he was obviously, you know, preparing heavily for chess, and he was in a chess mode. And I think against me, he just missed a couple of made in twos and things he wouldn't normally miss in time scrambles. Uh, okay, so we're looking forward also to Varian Sony versus Schwanet, which is just for a bit of bonus money, but they both qualify. And Chicken versus the Finisher to be decided. Mugwort versus King Switcher to be a time to be decided. And yeah, as I said, just to give us GSVC. Okay, saying La Lars O beat Cubes in the old CWC. Definitely Peng is the favorite. Mm, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not saying necessarily that Peng is not the favorite, but I'll still predict an upset anyway, no matter what you call it. Uh, let's say 6 4 for cubes. Uh, right. So, time for me to go for a walk. walk. Not sure what to do. I'm going to put it up on YouTube, but I'm not sure what to do in the first three minutes while I was mumbling to myself, muted. I uh, could either skip the first three minutes or do a re-recording. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, so congratulations again. Master 10 officially took the match 6-1 over Shabrat. We'll play the deciding match against Anjou and Nakamura in the next couple of weeks. So guys, thanks for watching and see you soon.